Hey guys, Irene here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I have another self-portrait behind the scenes video. If you missed my last week's one, I will leave it in the description down below. So go ahead and check that out. But today I decided to do something a little bit more creative. When I saw this picture on Instagram, I immediately got so inspired and I knew that I wanted to create something similar. Now this idea is definitely not new. Many photographers have been combining art in their photography and creating some really cool collage-like images. But I haven't seen many YouTube tutorials on how to achieve that look, so I decided to make one. So step number one, let's talk about the art that you're gonna be using in your photography. Where do you find these images and how do you make sure that you actually have the right to use them? You can find the artists that you really love and ask them for permission, but there's also an easier way and this is what I did myself. So there's a lot of images online that are under Creative Commons law, which essentially means that they are copyright free for you to use them in any way that you like, which is pretty awesome. There are many websites where you can find these images and I will list some of my favorite ones in the description down below. But the one that I personally used are from The Met. I'm pretty sure you've all heard of The Met, the huge museum, they have an enormous database of images and a lot of them are copyright free. I went ahead and searched for flower paintings and found a few that personally fit my style and the ones that fit the vision that I had for this picture. I also made sure that all of them were on a dark background. This will be very important in the Photoshop part and I'll explain it once we get there. So these are the three images I ended up using for this project and now that I have those let's go to the behind the scenes portion of the video where I showed you how I shot my self-portrait. So here is my setup. I have my Canon EOS R with the 50 millimeter 1.2 RF lens set up on the tripod. I have the collapsible Kate backdrop in red and the Aperture 120D with the light dome. And yes, this is an LED light. I wanted this image to be very contrasting and the background to remain quite dark. I set the stand on the left side and I tried to feather the light so that that it doesn't hit the background too much and lights mostly just the left side of me. On this first attempt, I wanted to experiment with makeup, so I went with this very dark and graphic look. For the hair, I used a lot of gel and I was mostly inspired by the 1920s. I used the Canon Camera Connect app again, just like I did in my previous video. This app connects to your phone and lets you use it remotely. And it's super, super useful when you're trying to take self portraits. I also even tried spraying water on myself. I was thinking of like a morning dew sort of thing to go with the flowers. And don't worry, I'm not actually spraying cleaner on my face. I just used the bottle and filled it with water. So I ended up not liking this look so much. I just thought that it was a little bit too strong and it was overpowering the flowers that I was adding in. This is kind of what I came out with. They're okay, but they're not really exactly what I was going for. So the next day I did a very simple and natural makeup with curly pinned up hair. I think this look was a lot more appropriate for what I was going for. And then I came up with the pose that I loved the most, where I'm holding a flower and I'm looking at it. My idea was that I will replace this flower with the painted one in Photoshop in the end. So this is the image that I chose and the first thing that I'm gonna do is clean up some of the areas. I'm selecting them with the lasso tool and then you just right click on your selection and choose content aware fill. Next, I'm expanding the image. So I made a new crop and now I'm going to select the empty areas while also selecting just a little bit of the image itself. Now right click on the selection and press content aware fill again and voila, your selection is now filled and you don't have those empty spaces anymore. Next, I did a very quick and rough selection of myself with the object selection tool in Photoshop and then change the color red to blue with the hue saturation. Next, I did skin retouch and some dodge and burn. I do have a whole separate tutorial on how I do this technique, so I will link it in the description down below and if you guys want to, you can check it out. Thank you. 
Alright, so here are some of the images that I'm gonna be splicing. I think I'm mostly gonna use this and this image because they have some similar flowers and just similar tones all together. So I'm gonna start with this picture right here with this rose. I'm gonna actually replace the rose that I'm holding with this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a magnetic lasso lasso and I'm gonna use magnetic lasso I just found that this works the best for these images I've tried many different other selection tools but again this was just the best one so I'm just gonna start outlining the butterfly and the rose there we go all right so now you want to click select and mask now here what we want to do is give it a smoother edge and I actually like to add a little bit of black into the edge just so that we can really see the flower real nicely. You'll see what I mean. So here on the shift edge, I want to put it to 100 so that we can feather it out just like that. And I'm going to also contrast it more. So yeah, about this. Okay, that looks great. So we're going to press OK. So now I'm gonna right click on it and press layer via copy. So it just created this uh, copy layer with just the rows. Now I'm gonna right click on the layer, press duplicate the layer and put it on my image. So here it is, we just got it duplicated. So I'm gonna right click on it, press free transform and I'm gonna make it bigger something like that and I think I'm gonna rotate it so we're gonna press rotate I'm gonna rotate it this way and now I'm gonna change the blending mode of the rose to lighten and as you can see it doesn't really work when we have something bright in the background but it works really well on the black parts of the image that's why I chose to shoot this on a dark backdrop I chose to wear really dark clothing and I specifically I chose the images with the dark backdrop as well so that we can blend them together very easily without making a very specific selection this way all the dark and black colors blend together really seamlessly and only the bright colors stand out. So I simply selected the black color and painted it on top of the white rose to make sure that now I can replace it with the pink one. Now for the butterfly, I decided to put it in a different spot, so I erased it, uh, copied it again from the image and now put it in the spot where it looks better. And voila, there we go. We just replaced this flower with the image flower. And this is pretty much what I'm gonna be doing to the whole image. I'm gonna be slowly cutting out flowers from this image and then placing them into my picture. All right, let's cut out some of these big ones. I do delete this layer before I move on to selecting more. All right, I kind of want to select this whole bouquet because I'm kind of thinking to place it on top of my head. Okay, so again, I'm gonna take the uh, magnetic lasso tool and I'm gonna start selecting these flowers. All right, so again, I'm doing the same exact thing gonna feather out the edge and I'm just gonna contrast it to make it sharper on the edge there and just gonna press ok right click layer via copy and then duplicate that layer onto my image all right so here is the bouquet so again I'm gonna make it bigger so I'm gonna free transform it make it quite big I might, let's see what this looks like right now. So I'm gonna put it to lighter and I'm going to see which way this looks better. All right, I think this looks actually pretty good. Okay, 
So I'm gonna stop it here, but I don't really like how these flowers look coming out of my head. Let me see, let me zoom out. Actually, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool the way it looks like that. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna leave it just like this. I think that actually in the end turned out pretty cool. I actually decided to replace the pink uh, flower with this red one. I took it from this picture right here. And I'm just gonna clean out these edges. All right, that looks great. And then the butterfly, I'm gonna move it right there. Yeah, I just think the red looks so much better. Uh, and I don't know, it's something about the light on the other one like didn't really fit. I also replaced the little pink flower with a more appropriate one. I think this red flower needs to be just a little bit brighter. So I'm gonna make it just a tad brighter over here with levels. I'm gonna now start adding a lot more flowers. I wanna add tons of flowers over here in this dark corner and maybe like some over here in the corners as well. I think I'm gonna go into this picture now and I'm going to select a really big amount of flowers as well. All right, so here we have this big chunk of flowers. So I'm going to lighten it right away. And I'm going to make it way bigger. Yeah, I think like I kind of really want to put them in the corner like this. Sometimes if it's like too many flowers it also doesn't look that great so I'm just trying to play around here see what looks best I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start deleting some of these so I'm gonna delete these guys I'm gonna flip ooh that, that right here looks nice. That frames everything really, really nicely. Now I'm gonna delete this flower right here, this flower right here in the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's much better. I'm also going to change the color of these flowers just a little bit. I think they're a little bit more orangey than the rest of the flowers because it's from two different paintings. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, do color balance and because I only wanted to affect this layer underneath I'm going to create the clipping mask and now it only affects this layer okay so we're gonna make it oh yeah that's much better look at that now it fits in with the other flowers so much more look at the difference so this was the before and after yeah, so much better because now they match um, the other painting so much nicer. Okay, I think I need just another little cluster on this side just to like frame this side right here and then I'll do some final adjustments. gonna add that texture throughout the whole thing uh, the texture from this picture right here because I really like the way it looks I think I'm gonna add it into my image just so that all of the flowers and the textures blend even better together I already have a little bit of texture here 
So what I'm going to do is again going back to this image right here. And I'm going to select the black and piece by piece I'm going to be putting it onto my image. So I'm just going to get the lasso tool. Okay, and this layer, I'm going to put it underneath all of the flowers, underneath everything. And I'm going to put it to lighten. And then I kind of even like how I added the border over here. Maybe I should add this border to the whole image. It actually looks pretty dope. I really like it. You know what? I'm going to do that first. <laughs> I actually kind of really like the way it looks. So I'm going to... I'm going to take the border from this image and I'm going to put it onto my picture. So I'm going to just take this whole selection and then I'm going to duplicate the layer onto my image. switch my brush for the eraser for the soft rounded pressure brush just so these edges look a lot nicer okay and I'm gonna change it to lighten as well oh there we go what do you guys think frame or no frame I think the frame looks very cool I really like it. All right, so now that we have the frame, I'm gonna just continue adding more of that texture. Light follows. Follows. You go. All right, so we've added some of this texture everywhere and i think that looks super nice that just kind of pulls everything together even more finally i'm gonna do some more color adjustments some more dodge and burn and i'll show you guys the final result I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you decide to try out this technique, please tag me in your images. I would love to see what you guys create. Give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.